It's a grim situation, but here to help us put it all into perspective from a political, historical, and religious context, we're joined by Alberto Fernandez, Vice President at the Middle East Media Research Institute and former ambassador with the U.S. State Department. Alberto, thank you for being here. These are really tough scenes to watch. And over the past week, we've been launched into a discussion on the religious and political tensions in the Middle East that few are experts in. But you are. So let's start at the top. How is Hamas organized? Who are they funded by? How are they able to launch this gruesome attack on Saturday? Well, uh, Hamas is very well funded. Uh, militarily, uh, it gets a lot of support from Iran. Iran, it's, it's, uh, it's armor, it's a bankroller for its uh, operations. It also gets uh, funding from Qatar. Um, so Qatar funds basically the Hamas civil service in Gaza as well. So between Iran, massive support for, for from Iran on the security side and a, a lot of money from Qatar, it's an extremely well-funded terrorist organization. Now, we're, the IDF, which is being compared to Hamas in this, the Israel Defense Forces, they're known for their incredible intelligence gathering capacity. How did Hamas get through that? Well, actually, we, we know because Hamas told us. Uh, we've, we've at, at memory, we put out some content where they actually talked about it. They said that uh, a Hamas leader said on uh, Russian television, he said that they've been planning this for two years. But they lulled the Israelis into a false sense of security by looking as if they were interested in governance, but they were interested in the well-being of the two million people in Gaza, and that they, for example, Hamas did not participate in rockets fired by a, a smaller rival group called Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Hamas just stood by and did nothing over the last couple of years. Meanwhile, they were planning this, lulling the Israelis into a false sense of security. So they actually are boasting about it. Well, that's that's shocking, and I'm glad that you brought that to our attention. We also have President Biden and the United Nations. They're talking about the potential casualties of this war and warning, saying Israel knows the laws of war. That presumably means that everyone is watching with a not-so-subtle reminder to be careful to avoid civilian casualties. What does that mean? Is Israel risking being eventually accused of committing war crimes? Uh, Israel's already been accused of that even before it starts. Uh, look, it's it's a it's a dilemma. Of course, armies should follow uh, you know rules of conduct and international law. The Israeli army, as as well as the U.S. army, but of course, Hamas depends on a civilian body count. Hamas wants to see two things in the next stage of the war. More dead Israelis, more dead Israeli soldiers, if, if the Israelis go in, and civilian casualties. That's why Hamas's entire military security infrastructure is deeply embedded, embedded within the urban fabric of Gaza. So this is a problem. It's going to be a problem. And unfortunately, there are going to be, you know, bad scenes that we're going to see in the coming days of, of innocent people being hurt. Now, early Friday, Israel officially called for all civilians of northern Gaza, more than one million people, to relocate south within 24 hours. Uh, th this warning isn't just the warning from today. It's been happening for a while now, but asserting that a ground invasion would be coming. Where are these civilians supposed to go? Egypt is not taking them. Jordan is not taking them. Where are they supposed to go if they can't cross corridors or open corridors in, in, on the borders? Well, I think the idea of the Israelis is that they would move from the northern part of Gaza to the southern part of, of Gaza. But, you know, it's, it's actually fascinating. You know who never gave advance warning of airstrikes or advance warning of coming ground offensives? The U.S. Army. The U.S. military never did that when it was Mosul or Raqqa or elsewhere fighting ISIS or al-Qaeda. So the Israelis are trying to... Uh, you know, as, as difficult as that is and as, as kind of haphazard as the result may be, they are trying, but it's not, not going to be an easy situation. 
Now, Alberto, we're looking at a small sliver of the world where this violence is happening, but the impact is widely felt. You have victims from at least 17 countries among last Saturday's count of missing or dead. And on Friday, we heard reports of increased security worldwide because of this pronounced day of jihad by a former Hamas leader for October 13th. What does this tell us about the impact of this war? Well, of course, Hamas is part of a larger structure of uh, so-called resistance groups, which are terrorist groups allied to Iran. So you have Hezbollah in Lebanon, and then you have various militias and death squads in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Um, so, that, so it's part of a much larger structure, which has a global, a global scope. Um, and, and, you know, we've seen people be killed by uh, uh, jihadists and Islamists in all parts of the world. Today, in fact, we had a... Uh, uh, a Chechen in France uh, kill a school teacher and injure two others on this day of rage. And he was a person that was on the security list of the French government as somebody who had, you know, radical views. So the danger is always there. Now, Alberto, last question, just because we're running out of time. Many Christians think that the land where our Lord Jesus Christ walked and was born still has Christians. But the Christian population in places like Lebanon, Armenia, Iraq, and Israel, and Palestine, they're barely hanging on. A survey by the Palestinian Authority notes that only 1% of Palestinians are Christians. So that's like 47,000 people. And in Israel, you've got 185,000 people, or 2%. How do they get caught in the crossfire? What's in the cards for them? It's a very difficult situation for the Christians of, of, of the Middle East. Um, taking this last, con this latest conflict, you know, Hamas is a militant Islamist organization whose vision is of Islamic rule, not only over Palestine, but over the whole world uh, and the coming of the caliphate and all of that. And so Christians are being pushed out. Um, and in Israel, you know, you have a non-Christian, non obviously, a Jewish government, and you have... Uh, Islamist terrorists threatening uh, uh, Christians uh, and Jews and others. And you see that in other countries. Hezbollah basically controls Lebanon and is squeezing the Christian population there. So it's a very difficult time. And of course, all more important for us to stand in solidarity and do everything we can to help our Christian brethren in the region. Well, Alberto, we're grateful for your expertise and we'll be leaning on you to come back and, and explain some more as, these, uh, as, as the war develops. Thank you so much. Thank you.